the way, little side note here, if you haven't already liked and subscribed to Ukulele Bang, please do so. I do all this stuff out of the goodness of me art, and I've got no friends. So please subscribe, be a friend, please. Howdy all, I got most of the notes in there. And that is our arrangement of Satin Doll, Jazz Standard, written by Duke Ellington and Billy Strayhorn. What a great name. Billy Strayhorn. That's great. I love that. Uh, written in 1953. My gosh, that's ages ago. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, this is a Jazz Standard. And um, we've done Autumn Leaves already on the channel before. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of complicated theory and stuff that goes on in these uh, jazz tunes. Um, if you're playing them on a like a piano, they're complicated. On a ukulele, I think they get a little bit more complicated. You've got to be kind of clever with how you arrange things. Um, but I will be doing videos on that in the future. Uh, how I arrange tunes, especially jazz tunes, and how you can uh, how you can understand the underlying harmony, and then how you can translate that onto the ukulele and, and get it all working from there. So this is a, a lesson, and we'll mention some of the theories we go through this. We'll keep it mainly to get you going with the arrangement, uh, this video. Uh, but look out for more videos on ukulele bang, uh, covering jazz, etc. Jazz. Just posh. I like jazz. Yeah, right. <clears throat> Let's get some firing through. So uh, I take an intro in the song. Uh, and but just for reference, you'll find the notation at the tablature below in the description box. Description box find the, the Flickr account, you'll see a link there, click on that, you can get the notations, you can learn it there. Um, so, let's go through it. Now, you see the notation, uh, there are chorus symbols as well, uh, throughout the song. I recommend, you know, well, you know, if you're just learning the arrangement of play, you don't need to understand that stuff too much, but if you're wanting to study the song, um, then those chorus symbols will be very helpful. The intro that I played there was the following. Now, if I'm sitting jamming around with this thing, or if I'm going to try and perform it in future, I'll probably use this, these shapes as a, a kind of foundation for improvising around. But what I'm playing here, uh, we've got an F major 7 arpeggio. Okay, that's now finger-wise, a little bit complicated. No, oh, he says. 5-5 five, five from the, 5 on the C to 5 on the E. 8 on the E. 7, 8 on the A. Complicated. The hard part there is the little rake. Not quite a rake, but the, the kind of finger roll. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> There's your first arpeggio, an F major 7 arpeggio. Then we're going to go into an E dominant 7 arpeggio. Same trick, we're going to play 4 4 little roll from the C to the E with the first finger. Then we're going to play 7 on the E, 5 7 A. And that's just the arpeggio going up with a little rhythm. Then we go into an E flat uh, dominant seven arpeggio. Notice that that's exactly the same shape. Uh, just move down one half step on the ukulele. Cool. Again, if any of these things I'm saying are troubling you, do not panic. We will cover them in future ukulele buying videos and you'll understand theory and everything else there too. But if you have a little bit of chord knowledge, you know what's going on. F major 7 to E dominant 7 to an E flat dominant 7. Then we go down uh, another uh, half step into a D dominant 7 arpeggio. And I'm... This little lick here. 2-2, two, two, C to E roll. 5-5, five, five, E to A roll. Hitting the uh, the flat and seventh there, the G. Little trill. That's not an annotation, but I've just put it in there. I don't know, it sounds gonna cool. That will probably change. But that's your intro anyhow. Just going through some arpeggios. Just walking down chords uh, into the main head of the tune. Head of the tune being, like you'll be in jazz land, um, in a nutshell, I, this is a very simplified way of thinking about jazz, but in a nutshell, usually you'd have a, the, the head of the tune, the melody of the tune, uh, and the chords, the changes. The players would all play the melody, uh, or all play the, the they'd play their part. The bass player would be doing his thing, the piano player doing their thing, uh, and then something would play the melody on top. And then, after you played the head, you then 
different players would then improvise over the same progression uh, uh, for a while and then go back to the head of the tune. That, in a nutshell, is a lot of jazz. But anyhow, I digress. Let's now go for section A. So you'll see in your sheet, section A. We have this. That's our section A. Most of it, anyhow, what I managed to play there. Um, so, yeah, you'll see again, you know, this video is more just going over the arrangement and how you can play it uh, from a technical point of view, from like just putting your fingers down rather than going over the thinking behind it. But um, I'll put a bit of that in here too. So I'm starting off at eight on the E string. And our melody. That's the melody of Satin Doll. If you don't know the melody of Satin Doll, go and go on Spotify or whatever you use for your music and listen to the song load by different players and just capture the vibe of that melody. Um, we're like doing a chord. Uh, we're doing a chord melody arrangement of this thing. So we're putting the melody in between chords and little ornamentation here. There. So we start off at eight on the E string. Then we're going to play this shape here. Which is going to be uh, 0 on the G, 0 on the C, 6 on the E, uh, 5 on the A. And a little 8, 5 uh, here, 8 on the E string, 5A. And when, notice when we're doing all this stuff, I'm trying to let the, the melody, for most of the song, I'm trying to let the melody ring out along with the chords. I'm trying to help that kind of illusion of two instruments being played at the same time. That's our first part. That's into our next bar, hitting the open G. Then I'm playing uh, this little shape here, which is a, a bar, three in the E, three in the A, four in the C. But use my pinky to play the five on the A. So that first little kind of sentence. See it there? That's pretty cool. Then we've got a three on the E string, going to the open C in the next bar. And that's like a little, almost, it's not quite a bass part on the ukulele, but it's kind of the same function. Leading into a, this malarkey here. So this will be an open C string with a six on the E, five on the A. Hit the open G. Back into this uh, three, three on the E and the A, four C. And then Pinky again, doing the work, play the five and the A string. And that's your first line in our arrangement. So I'll play it in slow motion for you. Make sure you see my right hand too. I'm using my thumb, by the way, for the whole thing. I'm using my thumb. Uh, you could you could play a finger style as well. I, I did that a little bit. I quite liked it. But I like the thumb. The thumb gives you a nice warm tone, um, which is very kind of uh, becoming in the jazz idiom. Oh! Becoming in the jazz idiom? That's fantastic. Note to self, remember that. Anyway, we're going to play. And that's our first line. Going into the second line, you'll see that there's a, a five slide on the A string leading into a seven on our next line. And for this, the only thing that can really go wrong here is you use the wrong finger. We're going to go into this. Well, this is an A minor seven. Uh, now, again, we're going too much of the details here. This, you're thinking, that's not an A minor 7 shape, that's a major shape I have there. Well, it is. Um, arranging this on the ukulele, quite often, I, at least when I'm arranging songs, I've got to delete the bass notes of certain chords. So it, it ends up being like an A minor 7 without an A in the bass. So it's still an A minor 7 when you hear it in context of the song, but by itself, it doesn't sound like an A minor 7. That's uh, another matter for another video. So that five to seven slide, use your middle finger. So when you finish, you come out of your your seat. You'll see your notation below. You have clicked on that, obviously. See it there. So my middle finger is playing that five, sliding to the seven, which allows me to get into this shape, which you'd make as a G chord shape. See it there. Go cool, right. That's the into our next line. Then that 10, 7, you'll see in your notation. Pinky is going to play the 10. And the 7 comes from the chord. 
And then going into our uh, into our D dominant seven. Again, this is you know, don't worry about it too much right now. Uh, six on the C string, fives on the E and the A. And again, that third finger is going to play the seven. So that uh, first, the kind of two bars on our second line should look roughly like this. See it there? Oh. So I'm playing that five, sliding into the seven, and then strumming it as I arrive. Now it, 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 it's slow speed; it kind of loses some of the. Kind of the, the kind of coolness there, um, and also being in the ukulele, we mentioned it before, but bear in mind that ukulele has definitely got um, less sustain than guitars, etc. So if you have a electroacoustic ukulele that you can plug in, a lot of those nuances ring out a little bit easier um, for people to hear, including yourself. But you know, as long as they're there, it's cool. <laughs> That's your next part there. It's that D seven. Then we have a little. This little movement going into an A minor 7 shape. Well, not an A minor 7 shape. Well, let's not, let's, let's not do the maths on that right now. <coughs> so we're going to play a 7 9 on the C string, my third finger. Then I'm going to clonk the 8 on the E 7 A. Then I'll go back down to this D 7 shape that we have. 6 on the C, 5s on the E and the A. Then playing that seven on the A string. I finish using the third finger. Put that whole line together, you'll get this. Cool, right? Then we've got two open Gs. Now for this part, I'm strumming. I haven't got much of a nail today. Uh, I usually have a bit longer nails than this, but it's currently the coronavirus pandemic and everybody's being hugely hygienic. So longer nails are not really in vogue right now. Um, but yeah, I'm using my I'm using a fake plectrum. I'm gonna hit two Gs and then we're into a big melody line using octaves. Right, so that melody like you'll see in the notation below, octave shapes. We mentioned that in our videos as well. So you'll learn what an octave shape is. But in a nutshell, if you haven't seen our videos, first finger is gonna for the very first octave we have, we're gonna play uh, seven on the C string. And we're going to play 10 on the A. And that is our octave. Notice that when you're playing that, your first finger at the the uh, the uh, the 7 on the C and your pinky at the 10 on the A, notice that your first finger, the underside of your first finger, is going to deliberately mute the E string. That's what we're going for. And when you're strumming this part too, you can, if you want to let that G ring out on uh, on top, that sounds kind of cool too. Like, bear in mind that my arrangement is just an arrangement, uh, and I will change this up a bazillion times before anybody ever hears it, outside of Ukulele Bang YouTube channel, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, but you can, once you've got the basic idea of the arrangement down, you can then use your ear or feety if you wanted to, and you can jazz around with it, and make it sound as cool as you like. Hey, anyway, that's the octave part. Now, you can, now, yeah. I'm hitting like a C major chord. I'm doing a really stabby, your good old fashioned C chord here. That can sound a little bit offensive, I feel, sometimes in, in, in jazzy context, but I do a really short stab of a C. So the listener doesn't really have that long to cotton on to this kind of basic C getting added in uh, to our jazz tune. So I keep it short and stabby. And you'll see when we have a, uh, for section A, at the end of your first sheet, uh, you'll find a variety of endings. You've got ending one, two, and three. Uh, ending number one uh, is the following. I'll do it again, but cleaner. That's pretty much it there. It's a pretty cool little lick. Kind of hard to do slow. Uh, we're gonna. You'll see the notation. We're gonna play three in the A. We're gonna play five uh, on the C. But the secret for this lick is actually pre-barring. So you want to get your first finger and flatten it against the three and the, the threes on the C, the E, and the A. And then from there, that finger can just stay there for the whole rest of the lick. That's so weird, just slow. All right, it's weird to do slow. Uh, that will stay there uh, for the entirety of the lick, the entirety of the lick. 
you start off with your, your third finger at the five on the C. You'll then hammer on to six on the C with your pinky. You'll pull back off to the five on the C. Then you'll pull back off to the three on the C string. And just that very first stab, you'll hit that three on the A. Uh, so after you've done that little do do do, I play a little two little double stops there. I'm playing the the five on the C with the three and the A. Then I'm playing just the threes. I notice that for my right hand, using thumb and first finger, like that. So my first my first finger's on the the A string, thumbs on the C, and there's that little lick in there. And then into this little uh, what is this? Like a little like a diminished A uh, chord. Which they work so good, just to anywhere. It's a symmetrical chord shape, so you can, you can do a heck of a lot with them. That'll be a good nerve video at some point as well. Yeah, I'm just doing a little descending from the, from the five, just going down half steps. Five, four, three, two, and then for the one, uh, like using our using our pinky as a reference finger. Five, four, three, two, one. When I go to one, the shape then becomes those open strings. You'll see it quite clean in the notation below. Hard song just to do in video. Some songs are easy. Some songs you need tablature for and you need notation for. That's what down below is all about. I'll show you the, I'll show you the very first shape uh, just so you know what fingerings to use for it because it's quite a weird one. We're playing four, five, four, five numerically, tablature wise uh, or fret number wise. First finger is going to go at four on the G string. Our second finger is going to go at four on the E. Our third finger is going to go at five on the C and our pinky. It's going to go with five on the A string. Half to finish course, full finish chord. There. It's too late in the evening to start thinking about those sort of things today. <laughs> but there's your little shape there. And that leads you into the end of the first cycle through. Now, as you'll hear in the arrangement that I, I just did there, and you'll see it written as well on the second sheet, the structure I just played uh, at the beginning there. We then go back to the beginning of section A. Uh, he says... Oh. We'll play that whole thing, like what we did before, but we have an alternative ending before we go into the next section. Uh, the alternative ending... I'm just kind of slowing the song down before section B, uh, with these little shapes here. I'll tell you a lie, that sounded pretty cool though. <laughs> This is like, like, like uh, dominant seven shapes. We're going to bar all the fours, put our middle finger on the five, on the E, on the A string. And you'll see, I haven't, I haven't put down the rhythm that I'm playing here. Just use your ear, make your own rhythm up, or change it if you want to. I'm playing that shape, four, 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 five, into three, 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 four, into two, 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 three, and then, and I'm a pinky on, turn it into a, a, a D major chord. Uh, yep, and then into a D dominant. You see the notation there, it's not too bad that part. And that leads us very neatly into section B. And here is section B. So section B, we go into a more kind of groove orientated part of the song. It sounds much more kind of funky. Get a bit of a, get a, bit of a stomp on. Stomp's important when you're playing solo ukulele. It's like you're, you're never alone. You've always got an extra instrument. Just hit the floor and hope the floor is hollow and not concrete. Anyhow, here's I'll quickly play I'll quickly play you uh, section B, get your ear into it, and we'll quickly die we'll quickly dissect it. See what's going on. So we have this. section A uh, into our final ending and we're home and dry. So section B, what's going on in section B? So again, section B chord wise, that'll be another matter for another day. Actually, a little thought here. I think it would be uh, maybe an idea to do our, a harmonic analysis of Satin Doll for Ukulele Bang YouTube video channel. I love the idea of that. That's on the to-do list. Anyhow, so <clears throat> here's our first part. We're gonna play a C minor seven. Then we're going to play a little run. 
And this is the, I think Joe Pass did that, I think, on the guitar. I was kind of like, discombobulated it and made it my own thing. Discombobulated, what a word. Little one there. So we're gonna play an F, a uh, dominant seven chord. But here's the little trick here. The, the as you see in the notation, you'll see for the F dominant seven, the F dominant seven actually appears back in the bar where the C minor seven should be. That was a conscious decision I made. Um, I want to put a little line in. So if I came back to that chord, I think it would sound kind of empty. So I'm deliberately playing the wrong chord in the wrong bar, uh, just so that extra chord is added in there. Clever, right? So yeah, at first it's a bar number three. That's your C minor seven, just a pure bar. If you find bar chords hard, you can find our other video on Euclid Bang about bar chords. A little run there, that's all cool. That we find your tablature below. Into a C, uh, into an F dominant seven. This is a bar. I'm barring all, uh, all four strings from fret number five. Adding a middle finger on number six on the A string. A little pull off here. Uh, an eight six five pull off on the A string using pinky, uh, second finger, first finger. Uh, uh, a little six seven five, uh, six seven five, uh, six five on the A, A on the E into a B flat major seven. That's, that, that's gonna be the, that, for this one. This is a weird one. You what a bar with your third finger. This is slightly weird if you haven't done it before. I, I'm I'm kind of barring with both fingers. You don't need to obviously, but it's just more comfortable for my hand. And um, but first finger will play three on the G string. Your third finger will bar the fives from the C, the E, and the A to get that shape there. Ugh. And don't do what I'm doing there. Keep that finger here, <laughs> right? That's just so you can see. Hard little shape that one there. And then we've got a little run, a little six, a uh, five, seven, into a B flat, uh, a B flat major six. major seven chord, lower the seventh to sixth. Simple. And there's a little bit of rhythm in there. That's all, that's all there really is to it. Again, the notation will get you for that part. Then we come into uh, this part. I quite like this part. Uh, a bit cleaner. This is a, a, a D minor seven into a G dominant seven. A little bit of a, a little bit of ornamentation uh, chucked on in top. So your D minor seven bar all fives, all five, but bar all four strings at fret number five, and then add your your third finger onto the seven on the A. I'm going strum down just all fives, up with that third finger on seven on the A, back down and just strumming the fives. Again, the notation below will be your best friend with this one. It's tricky. I'm finding it hard, and I've arranged it. Yeah. Uh, after that, we're going to play two G dominant seven chords. That'll be uh, seven, 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 eight. So a little bar again, and the uh, eight on the A string. Strum it twice. And that's your bar. That happens twice. Say bar. I imitated this song in two, two cut time. Um, but in my head, it was always cut time. You could also think of it in four, four. I think the two, two thing gives it. Um, the right vibe for me into my head. So you see the bar lines put in as well in this song, uh, or I put into our arrangement. Um, so yeah, just put that in mind. Then we're gonna play uh, the final line in section B. No, he says. And this is a C major seven. That same shape from earlier. Five on the the uh, the G with your first finger. You can bar it if you want to, just for comfort. I do. Uh, and then you're actually going to the actual bar that you need is going to be seven 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 on the C E and A. And there's your shape there. And there we go. So we go from the C major seven to a C six. The C six, right? Just delete the bar. Put your pinky at number seven. Uh, on actually, let's go through that in detail. That's actually quite a tricky little move in there. Um, so there's your C major seven, numerically five seven seven seven. Then for the C uh, the C six C major six, we're gonna play 
this shape here, five on the G string, we are first finger, third finger at number seven on the C string, middle finger number six on the E string, and then pinky is gonna go at number seven on the A. So all we're really doing there in that shape is we're moving that note at number seven down at number six. And just for that one small change, we've got to go from that shape to that shape. That's quite a big change. But again, notation will help you out massively. And once you once we land on the on that C6, we're just gonna do that kind of little sidestepping idea again we had from earlier. Um Bear in mind that in, in a lot of styles, especially in jazz, you can always walk into a chord or walk down to a chord. You heard like walking bass lines before. It's the same idea. If you've got a chord here and a chord here, you can just find uh, little steps that will take you to the next chord. And this one is the, the easiest walk of, of all. We're just going down, like just down half steps. Uh, how did I put one? How did I, how did I know? Uh, that's what I'm playing roughly there, and we're just ending off on our A flat, uh, or sorry, an A6, I should say. <laughs> Can't read. So we have a C6, B6, B flat six, A6, and I do a little bolt of lightning. We mentioned it before when you're arranging for solo ukulele, which is a weird thing to do considering that things like pianos exist in the world where you've got 88 keys and 10 fingers. Um, you've got to try and add in, I think, little exciting bits and bobs here and there. So that's that. And then after that, as the end of section B, I then go back to section A. Etc. And then our final ending, ending number three, as you see in the notation, is this. Uh, Standard. So we got like a classic, almost like a little, almost like a like a, like a blues turnaround. This is gonna be open uh, open E string, three in the A, one on the E, two on the E, three in the E. Keeping that three on the uh, on the uh, the A string there. Do there. Maybe you can play one. Oh. And that's you there. And then we finish off with that kind of classic ending. Right, we're ending off on the C6 chord. All right, when you strum your open strings on the ukulele, that's a C6 chord. There's your G chord. Sorry, that's your C chord. That's your, your G note, your C note, and your E note. The three notes to make up a major chord, we're adding an A. And A in the key of C is a sick. So it's a C6 or a C major six. And just before that, we're playing like a, like a C sharp major six, a little half step walk down. And that's it there. So your whole ending there is that. And I finish off with some harmonics. Why not, right? Harmonics, if you have, I think we've mentioned it before in other videos, but if you're not sure what a harmonic is, unless you're just going to touch directly above the fret. You're actually, you're actually not going to push the string down, you're just going to touch it directly above the fret. And once you've struck the string, let's, let's take, for example, uh, the harmonic at number 12 on the E string. The trick there is to keep your finger, like I use the pad of my finger, the soft part of my finger, the kind of fluffy part of my finger, whatever that part is called. I rest it right above the 12th fret. So you see there, not on the 12th fret, actually, you're actually right above the actual 12th fret. So there's your 12th fret, get the camera, there's your 12th fret here, that's your actual 12th fret. So you wanna keep it right above there. So I get my finger, I just touch the string above there. So I'm not pushing down, I'm just touching it. I then pluck it, and then I don't jump my finger off, but to get a really strong, clear harmonic on the ukulele at least, you wanna get your hand, you wanna get your hand off as fairly, once the harmonic sounded, feel that little ping against your finger, you want to get your finger off as, soon, as, as smoothly and as quickly as you can. It gives you a nice little harmonic. And for, for the end of that, for our rendition, I just get my whole, my third finger, rest it across all those strings at the 12s, little strum, finger off, and then you're home and dry. And that there is, in a nutshell, how to go through uh, our rendition of Satin Doll. It's a tricky one, this one. It's not an easy song. It does require a little bit of study, but it's definitely, uh, even if you have no understanding of Jazz Feedy at the moment, of course, 
you ukulele bangers. Ukulele bangers, that's fantastic. You guys will obviously learn about jazz in the coming uh, weeks and months. Um, so you'll understand what's going on behind the scenes of the song. But even if you have no interest in that, and you, you just want to basically bash out the arrangement, it's a good arrangement you can play around, around with, and you can quite easily manipulate it to your own end. So go for it really slow, um, and uh, you'll probably watch that video a few times, I guess, to get all the fingering stuff down, because it is footery. Um, it's like the opposite of just bashing out four chords and you play this song. It is tricky, but tricky can mean satisfying and good. Uh, what do people do at the end of YouTube videos? They say like, oh, like, like subscribe, so like, and leave a comment sort of thing. Okay, so so I could say, uh, oh, you could leave bang is what it's called. Yeah. Uh, so I could go bang like, bang subscribe, subscribe, and bang, bang a comment <laughs> below. Okay, I can yeah. do that. I can do that. <clears throat> bang like, bang subscribe and bang a comment below and let me know what you want to try and play on the ukulele. Bye for now.